Hello, and welcome back to our Bible study of Reflections in the Gospel of John. Today we are discussing the first part of John chapter 12. And John chapter 12 is showing us uh, the last moments in the last days of Jesus' public ministry with the people of Israel. And it is divided up, I divide up into, into two parts. The first part is going to be the first 19 verses which uh, show us two distinct uh, events that happen. And then the following part is a series of uh, commentary, both uh, by Jesus to, the, to the, the, the crowds and then Jesus with his the disciples, uh, commenting on what that public ministry means. So today in the first part of this uh, chapter, we have a series of events that take place. And there is a timeline given for this. It is, it is six days before the Passover. And then uh, the, the next day, Jesus uh, enters into Jerusalem. Uh, the first uh, eight verses describe to us a meal which Jesus has at the house of Lazarus and Martha and Mary. Uh, Lazarus, who had been uh, raised from the dead in the previous chapter, uh, so there is this uh, dinner being held there uh, between Jesus and his d d disciples and the uh, three siblings. And in the midst of this uh, dinner, Mary uh, anoints Jesus with an expensive uh, perfume and wipes his feet uh, with, her, with her, her, her hair. And in the midst of this, we see uh, Judas, who is uh, confounded uh, about this because he sees that the ointment could have been sold for a great sum of money and given to, to the poor. And then Jesus um, gives us his reason uh, for why this an anointing is important, which I will get to um, later. In the middle of this, we see that because there is a, loud, a large crowd that continues to follow Jesus because of the raising of Lazarus, the chief priests and the scribes uh, the authorities uh, see, have plans to uh, kill Lazarus to uh, get rid of that inconvenient part of Jesus' ministry, Jesus' sign ministry. <clears throat> so we come also then to the next day in verse 12. Verses 12 to 19 tell us about the uh, triumphal entry, the Palm Sunday uh, event in Jesus' ministry, which is a um, a great crowd comes with him and proclaims and lifts up the fact, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel, crying out there, hosannas. So Jesus comes in on a colt to a fulfillment of a prophecy from Zechariah. And what we see here are two events that are important in the moment but these events are also a great uh, foreshadowing of what is going to happen. The events in and of the, themselves are just uh, normal, uh, almost run-of-the-mill uh, e e events, but they look forward to even greater times foreshadowing what's going to happen in the future. Now, when we get to the an anointing story in verses 1 through 8, what we see here are two things that if it foreshadows. The first thing it foreshadows is the betrayal of Judas Iscariot. And Judas is portrayed in this story. Uh, his words seem to have a concern for the poor. But the commentary tells us that he did not care for the poor, but he was the, the, the group's uh, tr uh, treasurer in charge of the money bag, and he was a thief. So he was always looking for ways to dip into uh, what had been given to them. And that ties into his uh, motivations for his betrayal, that money is a part of it, although that's not a part of it in this, in this gospel, but it's a part of his mo uh, motivating factor that he wants uh, to betray Jesus for uh, monetary gain. So that's one part of the foreshadowing we see in the story of the an an anointing. But also in the an anointing story, Jesus himself uh, tells us that this looks forward 
uh, to the day of his burial. He says in verse 7, Leave her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. The anointing of the body uh, at burial is an important part of the customs of the, the uh, Jewish people. And so this becomes a, a focus that leads us to, to think forward to the, to the moment, that great day that is coming when Jesus will be lifted up and Jesus will be, will be uh, crucified and he will be buried in the, the, in the, the, the uh, tomb. It's important for us to realize that this an, an anointing is, a, is that foreshadowing of what's going to happen. When you get to the triumphal entry, <clears throat> here again we see a foreshadowing of something. Uh, in the moment, it just seems like a great celebration. Celebration of this uh, man who has uh, shown great signs, who has done great miracles in the sight of the of the people. We've seen that the lame walk and the blind see and the dead are raised. There's this uh, remarkable uh, progression that we have seen in what Jesus is able to, to, to do. And the crowds that were with him, crowds that are coming to, 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 together, they, they, they gather and they cry out for God's salvation, that this is their king that they have been waiting for, that the king is coming on a donkey's colt, as Zechariah had prophesied. So, but there is more to the story than this. As it says in verse 16, his disciples did not understand these things at first. They did not know what was going on in the moment. But later on, they would understand. It says, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to, to him. The triumph we see here, the triumph of entering into the city of Jerusalem, the triumph of, of the cry of Hosanna for God's salvation, the cry of the king is coming. It means one thing in this story, but then it means something completely different when Jesus is raised from the dead. When that, when that moment of resurrection comes, when that gl great glorification that God, that Jesus has been telling them about happens, when Jesus is glorified in their sight, they look back on this and say, aha, this story has more meaning than just a group of pilgrims entering the city of Jerusalem. They look back at the an, an, an anointing story and says, this has more meaning than just a kind act at a, a, a dinner gathering. It has more meaning than that. And so th that's one of the aspects we have to look at when we look at, at Scripture, is that the disciples in the moments that these things happened did not understand because they did not have the full picture. But when they... Uh, they, look, they see the crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection. They look back on these things and they say to themselves, these have greater value. And it's important for us to recognize that we, we never get these stories unfiltered. That we always get these stories uh, based on the knowledge that the disciples had that Jesus was raised from the, 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 the dead. That's why these stories have, have, have import for them because they look at these stories not as objective observers, but as those who, who know what Jesus did, who know what God did in Jesus Christ. And so they look back on events and say, well, this is important because of what we know now. And often that is how our uh, revelation of God works. That we may not understand what God's purpose is for all things, but looking back, we can see the, the moments that God put in place for us. We can look back and see that God put this in, in place, made this happen. And the, the, the uh, circumstances become clearer when we see the whole picture. For the disciples to get the whole picture, we have to get to chapter 21. 
And once we get to chapter 21, we begin to understand everything else that Jesus was doing. Both the anointing and the triumphal entry tell us in the story that they have more meaning than what is here. To look forward to what's going on. To look forward to what Jesus is going to do. These last events, these last public, big public events that Jesus participates in, tell us what's going to happen. Tell us the importance of his death, burial, and resurrection. The importance of his glorification before the Father. So that's our uh, Bible study here in the first part of John chapter 12. Next time we will continue uh, in John chapter 12 with uh, Jesus's commentary on his public ministry, leading us forward uh, into that last night of Jesus's life in chapter 13. Let us pray. Lord God, as you have opened up your word to us, we pray to see you at work. We pray that you will reveal yourself to us in so many ways, that you will provide us with uh, a way forward. You will provide us with the, the knowledge to see where you have been at work in our lives in so many ways. We call upon you to let your spirit guide. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.